Honorable members, during recess, I received a communication from His Excellency the President, dated 19th January 2023, returning the National Local Content Bill 2022. That is pursuant to Article 913 of, of the Constitution and in furtherance of uh, Rules of Procedure, Rule 143.1 one of, of the Rules of Procedure, I will now read the letter verbatim. The letter is addressed to the Speaker of Parliament. The reference is the National Local Content Bill 2022. The above subject, the above subject matter refers to, I received the National Local Content Bill for assent. Whereas the bill seeks to address and remedy the shortcomings of the defect in the existing policies, legislations, and guidelines touching on the subject of the local content in Uganda. That includes the Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Assets Act 2, 2003, that's PPDA, the Petroleum Exploration, Development, and Production Act 2013, the Petroleum Exploration, Development, and Production, that is the National Content Regulation 2016, Guidelines on Reservation Scheme to Promote Local Content 2018, and Buy Uganda, Build Uganda, that's Bubu Policy. There is need to review some clauses to bring them into compliance with the 1995 Constitution, the East African Treaty, and other legislations as listed below, so as to avoid implication, implementation ch challenges. One, Section 1C, the application of the Act. It provides that the Act shall apply to the Ministry to the Mining Act, Electricity Act, Uganda Tourism Act, and Investment License Incentives. The above acts already have provisions in the local content. This act should apply to the public sector procurement matters only. B, Section 1G and Section 26 requires governments internal and external and internal and externally acquired resources to comply with the local content obligations. This is not practical since each development partner has its own policies and guidelines that are negotiated before any project starts. The provision should be reviewed to allow the responsible ministry to negotiate local content in the agreement to the extent of its practicability. C. Section 2 defines the contracting authority to mean a ministry, comma, department of government, or any other body established by government and mandated to carry out public function in public fi public private partnership. The definition is not adequate. It should be expanded to, to cover the authority, local government, local authority, statutory body, or agencies. D, section three, establishes a local content department under the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. To implement the provisions of the act, the function of the department include, among others, monitoring and audit compliance with the local content obligation under this act. Audit and compliance issues should be left out of the office of the Auditor General, Internal Auditor General, or the Regulator PPDA. The department should undertake the monitoring function together with the stakeholders. E. Section 4 gives the preferential treatment to Uganda goods, works, and services. 
This contradicts the East African Community Protocol on free movement of goods and services and the East African Monetary Union. The section should be amended to read East African goods, comma, works, and services instead of Uganda. F, section 5.2 provides that where goods locally manufactured in Uganda or a service provided by a Ugandan citizen or a company do not meet the required quality or timeline for delivery or completion. The local content entity may, with the written permission of the department, procure the goods or services as directed by the department. The above will lead to inefficiency and effective service delivery. Procurement reforms decentralized procurement to increase efficiency. Accounting officers should be given a discretion to procure from foreign sources in case a local manufactured goods or services does not meet the required standards of quality, quantity, time, or completion. The accounting officer shall remain personally responsible for any omission. G, section six, provides for reservation of goods or services to be exclusively procured from Uganda. Schedule two of the B list services to be procured, to be provided by Ugandans. This is against the spirit of the principle of the East African Common Market Protocol and specifically the Article 35 that requires the partner states shall not discriminate against suppliers, products or services originating from other partner states for purpose of achieving the benefits of free, complete, free competition. This is also against Article 13 of the East African Custom Union Protocol which requires each of the partner states to remove with immediate effect all the non-tariff barriers to the importation of their respective territories of goods originating from other partner states. This should be amended so that the section reads East African, not Uganda. Honorable Shabe, this is your law. There should be an introduction of a category called national providers compromising, comprising exclusively of Uganda's best farms. Schedule 2 should be transferred to regulations and items added after a thorough assessment of the providers that they have the capacity and the quality of the items to satisfy the government of Uganda's needs. H. Section 7.3 provides for, provides for preference of goods available on the Ugandan market. In this section, a good is readily available on the Ugandan market where the good is not locally manufactured in Uganda, but it is available on the Ugandan market and sold by the Ugandan entity. The concept is not clear and seems to be duplicated under section 6. It should be deleted since it is counterproductive to import substitution against the intent of the objective of the local content. That ideally targets local produced goods, services, and utilization of local personnel. I, section 9, on reservation of contracts for public works. It provides that the minister shall, in consultation with the public procurement and disposal of public assets authority, and notice in the Gazette, reserve certain contracts for public works to be exhaustively granted to Ugandan citizens and companies. The word shall be replaced with may. Yeah. Section 10 on pro 
prohibition of uh, subcontracting. The, the provision is ambiguous and should be re revisited. It should be amended to read prohibition of uh, subcontracting by a subcontractor. It should be noted that a firm that has subcontracted remains liable for the subcontracted works or services. This is likely to raise equality assurance issues. K. Section 11.1 on the requirements of the subcontract public works contract or activities provides that every contract for public works granted to an individual or an entity other than a Ugandan company or a citizen shall be subjected to fulfilling the eligibility, eligibility requirements under section 13 containing the requirements of such an individual or an entity to subcontract at least 40% of the subcontracted, subcontracted works to Ugandan company. 40% across the board may not be feasible for every works contracted. This should be transferred to the regulations and a provision for exceptions be incorporated. Section 12 on liability of subcontracted, subcontracted works. It provides that an individual or an entity who subcontracts part of its contracted works under Section 11 shall at all times be responsible for the performance of the contract and shall without recourse of the subcontractor provide the relevant security and funds for the performance of the contract. Section 24, 2 and 3 on the compliance of the subcontractors contradicts Section 12. The obligation under this act accruing to the local content entity, a contractor, supplier or a subcontractor subcontra shall in equal measure accrue to a contractor or subcontractor, agent, or a successor in a title of such a person, a body or entity, parties whose joint, who are jointly undertaking to execute any activity subject to this, subject to this act shall be jointly and severally required to comply with the obligations arising under this act. M, section 13F and 25A provide that the department or local content entity may blacklist such a local content entity, a contractor, supplier, or subcontractor, or impose a fine. This is likely to cause a confusion in the procurement process since the ministry, department of PPDA and the local content entity can blacklist. In the spirit of good performance, of good governance, the function should be left to the regulator PPDA. N. Section 21 and Section 29 on the procurement, planning, and evaluation of the local content in bids. The content under these provisions do not match the subtitles, and in the same case, they are confusing. These provisions should be cross-referenced to the PPDA Act and regulations on the procurement, planning, and evaluation. Or, Section 22.2 provide for the Department of Local Content, which will, be, which will have powers, among others, to approve all the contracts from procurement and disposable, disposal entities, PP, P, PDEs, in the country. The provision is in conflict with the Article 119 of the Constitution that mandates the Attorney General to give his opinion or advice in respect of the contracts, agreements, treaties, conventions, and documents in which the government is a party to. Section 29, that's P, there is need to revisit the offenses 
some of them some of them seem to be too harsh section q section 32 1 on prohibition of importation of regulated goods and services it provides that a person shall not while carrying on any activity regulated under this act import any good service agricultural produce or natural resources that are readily available produced or manufactured in Uganda it is not clear who a person being referred to in this bill in addition a private sector has a right to import any good or service for business and their own consumption as long as they follow the existing legal framework section 38 on appeal it provides that the local content entity or contractor provider or supplier aggrieved by the decision of the department shall appeal the decision to high court within 45 days of the decision the provision should be cross referenced to the PPDA Act and regulations. A well elaborated complaint handling the mechanism is provided therein. Supremacy of this Act. This provision is on the Act taking pr precedence over the old existing laws relating to the local content in Uganda may not be practical from the legal perspective. Section 40 and 41 on prohibition of Im imposition of foreign standards and foreign technical qualifications. The mandate of Uganda National Bureau of Standards is to formulate and promote the use of standards in Uganda. The mandate takes into consideration that Uganda National Bureau of Standards does not have the standards for items procured or produced in the country. Therefore, a provision allowing international standards where necessary should be incorporated. In view of the above, I hereby return the bill to Parliament for a review of the sections listed above in accordance to Article 91. 3B of the Constitution of Uganda and signed by YK Museveni, the President. The bill was returned and we, we are recommitting the bill to, to the Committee of Finance.